over the uh, Indian Premium Comfort Seat. Um, there'll be two parts of this. One is just showing you what it looks like up front before we do the installation and the ride. Um, so for the most part, this is it. It's a lot bigger than the default Indian Scott Bobber seat. It's a lot more cushier. You can see it's got a lot more play. It's got brown on the top, black on the on the sides. The connection to the bike is the same as the default bobber seat. So it's got the two prongs and then just the latch that it comes down onto. So overall, the look is actually you know, pretty nice. It's pretty soft and um, looks like it'll be a lot better than what uh, is on there already. Um, so in the next part, we'll go over that. For the second piece of this, I have the 1920 Solo Saddle Seat. It's, uh, you know, it's got a little bit of cushion. Still way better than the default Scott Bobber seat from the rides I've done on this thing. So this sits on top of the mount like this, like that. So it gets screwed in, gets in, um, screwed into the base of the, uh, the bobber. And it also comes with this piece, which covers the, uh, the battery and all the electrical components. So this piece actually gets installed first over the electrical components and then the base comes over up top and hangs over this piece. All right, so that concludes the first part of this. Uh, the second part is actually showing you guys the installation and the test ride. So I promised you guys that I would show you how to install this on the bike. See how the prongs are on the back? So I start off with the back side, push it in, slow down, got the top piece on the latch, push it down, and boom, that's it. That's all it takes to install. So I'll pop the seat back off, show you guys the innards of this, and uh, we'll see what's going on. All right, so we're looking at the top side of my uh, Scout Bobber 20 bike. This is where the battery goes, all that good stuff. Notice you got the still have the four screws here. If you look in here, you got the two slots where the pieces go and these prongs, just like the default bobber seat. So there's no magic to this now. One thing I do want to mention since I did show you guys the 1920 Solo Saddle is that this bolt here doesn't come with the bike and these bolts here don't come with the bike. So when the 1920 Solo Saddle seat's in, these screws are out, this bolt's out, and there's a mount here for the guard on the electrical pieces. But I'll cover all that on my next video on the 1920 Solo Saddle seat installation and uh, test ride. So let's uh, pop the seat in so it goes boom easy as that all right we'll actually go around the bike look at the bike from every angle here so this what it looks like from the side so it looks like from the back here Here. All right, so I wanted you guys to see what the riding position is. I'm 5'10", 5'11", 200 pounds. Um, you know, fairly long legs. I've got the 10-inch ape, so it's going to sit different than Scout Bobber. Um, for me, this fits better. I like better sitting a little bit higher, but whatever. So now, as you can see, now I'm actually sitting into the bike a little bit more. My legs are closer to the tank. You know, I can kind of sit back and lean bit but you can feel the comfort so the next part of this will be the uh, the test ride all right so we finally made it to the test ride portion of this review in this review I went around the back streets of Tampa where the weather was around 75 to 80 degrees a couple clouds in the sky but honestly it was a beautiful day so no complaints from my end so I'll start off with naming the dislikes on the stock bobber seat that is included with the bike by breaking it down into the three following scenarios. Acceleration, cruising speed, and sharp turns. So when it came down to acceleration on the default stock seat, I would slip off the back end of the bike. There was a lot of movement, a lot of wiggle room, and honestly, I didn't really feel secure at any moment while I'm riding on the stock seat. My arms would get tired due to holding onto the handlebars a little bit more and my lower back had no support. So definitely the comfort seat 
wins out big time in this regard because it actually cups your butt, holds you into position, and you can feel all the cushion as you accelerate. So you can probably ride this for about an hour in city limits, accelerating, decelerating. Now as far as um, cruise speed, the stock seat was a bit hard. It hurt my butt after about 30 minutes of riding and at times I would still fall off or slip around on the seat with the comfort seat. My arms felt nice and loose. My seating position was right against, you know, my legs were a little bit loose against the tank. I can get a little lean and when I started to get tired I can, you know, move around and actually get a better posture or better seating position and go about 30 more minutes. All in all, on the comfort seat I could ride until my gas tank pretty much runs out on a 3.3 gallon tank. Now yeah, another perk about the comfort seat is that it's way cheaper than its competitors, the Mustang Touring Seat and the Corbin Touring Seat or the Solo Saddle Seat. I think the Mustang seat runs for about 400 bucks while the Corbin can be anywhere between five to six hundred dollars. The comfort seat runs around 220 bucks so just right off the bat significant savings and the comfort from this seat is actually pretty ideal. I cannot see myself spending any more money than I did on this seat and I don't think I would get that much more comfort to the point where I'm willing to spend 300 more dollars. Well this concludes my video. Um, hopefully I was informative enough to help you make a decision to either buy or not buy the comfort seat. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below and I'll try to respond as quickly as I can. And Seamoss out.